Rin Tin Tin was probably the most famous dog of the silent movie era. And that's saying something because there were 80 different dogs that made movies, films, during the silent movie, during the 20s basically. And he stood out and there's a lot of reasons why he stood out. And I'm going to do a, another video talking about that whole period and what happened and how incredible it was for a variety of reasons. But right now, we're going to delve into Lee Duncan and Rin Tin Tin training. This book is probably impossible for most people to find, so you're not going to be able to get it. But what it does prove is that long before there were people like Karen Pryor, Gene Donaldson, and a lot of other people who wanted to start talking as if they brought in the aspects of positive reinforcement from Skinner, movie dog trainers and circus dog trainers who predate them, and some of the early movie dog trainers had been circus dog trainers, have always used, have always used primary reinforcers. And if you don't know what that means, uh, in this case, it generally means using food. There was no force compulsion methods used for the movie dogs. To get dogs to do some of the things that were done in movies is incredibly difficult and most people have no idea how, how hard it really is to get dogs who are actually acting, meaning they're not looking like a pet dog, they're doing far more then sit down, come, go to place, and leave it, as everybody wants to say. And they're not doing sport dog with, the, like I've talked about before, IGP, the stargazing, healing, and snapping into things. It'd be as unrealistic as having an actor move around as if you were always in a band doing parade, marching band stuff, or doing military formation and promenades, that sort of thing not normal. People don't move around like that. Dogs in real life don't move around like that. Controlling the dog and being able to tell the dog, for example, to sit slowly or to sit quickly is a skill. And it's a skill beyond what pet dog trainers can do. And it's beyond most sport dog trainers. I don't care what they've done. We gotta talk about what Lee Duncan is doing. Lee Duncan in the book is talking about a method of approaching the dog and bonding with the dog. Now something that is incredibly important that I will say at this juncture is that Rin Tin Tin and Lee Duncan, Lee Duncan is the soldier who found Rin Tin Tin in France in a bombed out German uh, kennel situation. Uh, he, the mother had just had the puppies uh, and he took two of the puppies to take with him to go back to the United States. That's a long and involved story. But suffice to say that he got Rin Tin Tin from one of the earliest uh, breeding working dogs because the German Shepherd, as a breed, had really just started in 1880. And these are very pure lines, very incredibly good dogs. In fact, some of the other dogs that were in the movies in the United States uh, uh, were also from the same, they were part of the same war dog breeding program that the Germans had created and the German Shepherd. The German Shepherd at that time period is vastly different from the German Shepherd you're going to see now in the United States. Uh, they're more closely uh, associated with what a Dutch Shepherd or maybe a Malinois is at this point in time. They, they had, their genetics hadn't been corrupted. Didn't have the now Rin Tin Tin was a one-man dog <laughs> and Lee Duncan spent all of his time with that dog and he became very bonded with the dog in fact he like i was going to say with the original lassie with rudd weatherwax the original lassie pal rudd was bonded with pal although he didn't he wasn't the same as lee duncan and rin tin tin because rudd didn't want to have a collie and he had the collie it's another story and gave it away to a guy to hold on to him Warm, and then he needed, then suddenly a movie came up with Lassie come home, and so he, he thought, oh, I can use that dog, pal, again. So he went to get the dog back. And after that, of course, it became a huge thing, and he became really enamored with pal 
he did a lot of work with him. Now Rudd had a lot of other dogs. Uh, Lee Duncan didn't branch out and become a gigantic uh, trainer of many, many dogs. In fact, when it went to the TV, uh, when it went to the TV series, he was no longer the trainer for the TV series. He didn't want to be. He didn't want to do it anymore. He just wanted to be on his ranch with his uh, with his dogs. I mean, at that point, Rin Tin Tin died in 1938, the original one. But the original one was incredible. Every trainer from that time period that coming forward, even the young guys at that time period who were starting out, like Rudd, for example, Weatherwax, said that Lee Duncan did things with Rin Tin Tin that nobody else would try. He did, they didn't have CGI and they didn't have all the stunt uh, safety things and he would do things of having the dog jump from a moving train into his arms when he was on the side, off, off of the train, off of the side as the train goes by. That's something that most people are not going to try to do and wouldn't do and wouldn't risk the dog, but he knew his dog. And that leads me to one of the key factors, and that it's in the book, is the bond. Everybody who's a phenomenal trainer has an incredible bond, especially with their, with their best dogs. And for Lee Duncan, that was Rin Tin Tin. For Rudd Weatherwax, that was Pal. Although he trained many other of Pal's prodigy uh, dogs, it didn't matter. And the same thing, uh, Lee Duncan, uh, Rin Tin Tin 2 was nowhere near as good as the first Rin Tin Tin. Uh, the third one was better. But anyway, the point being is that the book lists, not in, a, not in a structured way, of how to train a dog in a completely different way than the than saying a force method, than the compulsion method, than the just the compulsion or praise method. It, it talks about primary reinforcers, talks about giving the dog a lot of time to do it, talks about just stopping if you're not getting anywhere, but to constantly work with the dog and constantly get the dog to trust, which is hugely important. Uh, the best trainers are the ones who can get a bond. And I'm not talking about spending an hour with a dog here and there. I'm talking about living with the dog day in, day out. Going everywhere with the dog. That's what Lee Duncan did. That's what uh, Rudd ended up doing with Pal. That's what I've done with many of my dogs here that right now, my super dog is here right now. He's with me quite a bit. This is the dogs need to trust you. And that doesn't come from just hanging out with them and throwing a ball around or something. And one of the areas that this different that Lee Duncan's talking about that I haven't seen people talk about in quite a while is the grooming of the dog, taking care of your dog, grooming the dog. I don't see that anymore. Uh, that grooming is a bonding time. That's an incredibly good way to bond, and that's what other canines do to each other. The grooming that they do of each other is a bonding, a significant, we are of the same uh, group. I don't want to get into the wolf stuff because that's a whole other video, dispelling the erroneous ideas about dogs act like wolves. <laughs> not really. Uh, so anyway, but Lee Duncan, in this book, he's not going to give you, he's not going to do like a... Uh, uh, Kohler or Kuehler, William Kuehler, with a very structured, systematic way of training. That's not what he's doing. He is approaching this from how he trained Rin 1010. Of course, again, I've got to say something that a lot of people don't really admit, and is that certain trainers become very good with certain dogs and also certain dog breeds, just like Winifred Strickland, German Shepherds. She has never been equaled. Uh, with what she's done as far as AKC obedience titles. No one's ever matched her. She knew the breed, German Shepherd, uh, what they became. And she was able to train them incredibly well. Now, of course, the agility people only go with Border Collies because they cannot work with certain dogs. That's one of the things that you'll find that many of the pet dog people or the trick people or the agility people, they cannot work with certain dogs. I, when they say, I, you can do this with any dog, let's say, okay, let's see you work with a bloodhound. 
<laughs> you know, let's see you, let's see you work with a Saint Bernard. You want to impress me with the obedience skills? Get a Saint Bernard. Let's see how, how far you can get a Saint Bernard to do things. Uh, for example, okay. Now, lots of tangents, but like I've said in my other videos, this always leads to tangents. But in the end result, what is very vastly important about this is that this book is published closer to 100 years ago than it isn't. And this book is way ahead on the training methods, what the positive only people want to use. Now, positive only is incorrect and it's stilted and all those people who follow an ideology cannot train vastly different types of dogs. They are incapable of training boar hunting dogs, incapable of training anti-poaching dogs, incapable of training protection dogs, sled dogs, or hunting dogs. They can only work with a certain type of dog and they like to have them neutered so that they can control hormonally, have them reduced to something like a Pomeranian, you know. <laughs> anyway, these are hard facts and you're getting them now. Okay, once again, I, I haven't given any of my credentials. I've trained dogs since 1974 from the Arctic to the jungle on three continents. I've trained vastly different types of, of dog pursuits, sled dogs, war dogs, and that includes scout dogs, sentry dogs, uh, patrol dogs. I've trained AKC obedience. I, that was one of the first things I did. I'm interested in that. I've done trick dogs, my two mentors, or movie, TV, and protection, war dog trainers, actually. Uh, and that is what I come from, a tactical, pragmatic view. And nobody is better than tactical and movie dog trainers. They get the job done, and the details in a movie dog, what they're able to do, how well they can do it, how they can make it look effortless, and at the distance they're working, I mean, only some war dogs and only herding dogs are working at the distances that you work with uh, movie dogs and tactical dogs again. But anyway, so I would recommend, if you don't know that story, uh, I haven't really gone into it in complete detail about Rin Tin Tin and Lee Duncan. It's uh, very interesting. I know there was a movie made, uh, a B movie, a couple, I don't know, four or five years ago about Rin Tin Tin and the discovery of him in France and stuff. Uh, I don't know, I haven't seen it, so I can't, I can't comment further than that. But anyway, it's vastly important, this time period, which the modern millennial pet dog ever knows nothing about this. You need to invest in your craft. And once again, you need to be believe in your dog, you can believe in yourself. And that's what Lee Duncan is saying in this book, that's what Rudd Weatherax was saying in, the, in his book. And I'm going to go bring more movie and TV dog trainers books to the for like, so like and subscribe and share this because this my dog channel is completely different than anybody's out there. Oh yeah, yeah. By the way, if you do know somebody that's trained dogs since 1974 on three continents, as many different types of dogs as I have, please put a link below in the comments. I'd like to check them out. Okay, my credentials are very unique, I think. And but if you happen to know somebody that matches me, I'd like to check them out and see what, what they're doing. And you can follow uh, some of my dogs on my channel. Of course, this is my super dog right here, Zarathustra. He's a KMPV uh, prodigy. His dad is famous. He's a Dutch Shepherd. And some of my other dogs that are here with me right now, one of them sleeping. We'll see you later, okay? So. Love